Hello and welcome where we paint away the stress of everyday life today. Now I'm going to be doing something different. I've already done a video using modeling paste and we'll talk about modeling paste a little bit more in just a second. But I'm painting on a 24 by 20 canvas and I've gone ahead and put some modeling paste on there and I filmed that on my iPad, on my iPhone. <laughs> I filmed that on my iPhone. So just have a look how I did that and then we'll have a look at the palette. All you need to do basically is get yourself a palette knife and then I'm going to build up some texture. Now the reason I'm doing this on my iPhone is because I didn't want to go to the bother of setting up um, all of my cameras because this takes about 24 hours to dry. So um, I thought I'll get this done before I start filming the actual lesson itself. So after you've drawn out the, the initial um, drawing on this case is cliffs and a seascape then you all you need to do then is just apply this flexible molding paste onto the surface of the canvas like this and and just make it looking rough this is going to give you a fantastic effect. well that was interesting wasn't it and, and and the thing is with modeling paste is you can either go and buy your own or basically you can pick up some of this stuff um not this particular make but there's loads of tile adhesive out there which you could use which is pretty good for this type of thing um you can mix some plaster of paris with some pva glue yourself have a go you never know you could pop along to my shop and buy some flexible molding paste or you can go to an art store and buy something similar so all these modeling pastes and and, and that type you type thing and flexible modeling pastes and lovely stuff to use really are but you can make your own inexpensive um and that's the thing now i've got a messy palette why because i have just done another lesson um in relation to this one um, when I've done a cave painting and if you want to know what that is, please click in the eye cards by there um, Something you can do with the kids in fact So I got some raw sienna some burnt umber a little bit of black and uh, I've got some white I've got some uh, Cerulean blue. I got some ultramarine blue I got a little bit of green because we're going to be doing some lovely texture work here um, as far as this um, seascape is concerned, I'll talk a bit more about that in one second. I've got some of my blending white. This is the white that I sell on www.clay5art.co.uk in order to help me blend. And I'm thinking that's going to be quite useful today. I use it quite extensively during my Bob Ross technique paintings. Um, but we won't talk about more, any more about that. So let's just get straight in and get some paint on this canvas. So I'm picking up a one inch short flat and I'm picking up a little bit of my blending white. This is a lovely, um, thin, creamy white, which I use for blending with. Um, and I, you can use a little bit of water with it. Um, it's not going to affect it too much. And you can see I haven't put a ground onto this canvas yet um, because I thought I'd just paint, paint on plain white because with the, with the texture that I've got on there, that's going to work fine. So I'm not going to worry too much about too much detail into the sky today. All I'm worried about is getting some paint on this canvas. So I'm just putting a thin coat of this blending white on. Now what you can do with this blending white, if you've got a, a fine mist bottle, which is one of these things, um, you can just slightly mist it. And what that's going to do is going to keep this paint open for an extended length of time and it's going to allow you to blend some lovely sky color into it there you go and it's an acrylic base so it's a lovely paint all depends where you live some areas um, it will dry a bit quicker than others but that's just how things are so we need a bit of cerulean blue and i'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue on the same brush bit of cerulean blue bit of ultramarine blue on the same brush there we go and I'm going to start start in the top corner like this I'm going in a crisscross channel a uh, uh, ch <laughs> crisscross manner crisscross channel I'll tell you why it was what I said channel um, is because this um, seascape is being inspired from an area uh, not too far from where I live called Southern Down and um, I've changed the perspective of, of this a little bit um, but these have got, it's down there, it's got some lovely rich red type of um, 
rocks um i'm not sure what type of stone it is but you now you can see i'm leaving little bits of little bits of um uh, white showing through so i'm just going to get some more cerulean blue i'm going to touch of that blending white on my brush because you can mix the paint with it it doesn't have to go on first and i'm just going to put a bit of that on there like that and i'm going to spray a little bit more water on there just to help me blend this and this is a nice way to get a, a really nice smooth blend and i want to go really light down there i've got a few dirty marks on my canvas because it's been sitting on the floor of the studio for a while um but southern down this is the british channel in fact this this goes all the way up and um this is the british channel so it's, i don't know if it's, it's, it's like an estuary then it's not it's not actually like like the the, the sea as you th as you would imagine it and it can be quite dirty and brown looking so i'm gonna try to make it look a bit better than what it is <laughs> because it can be quite a a dirty water um and you've got southern down you've got lantrid major um you've got barry um that's where the docks they come the, the the big liners come up here and they go to the docks cardiff docks and things like that so i'm picking up some more blending white i'm picking up a little bit of ultramarine blue because it's got a bit of warmth to it it's got a bit of um it's got a bit of a red purpley look about it and i'm just going to put a bit of warmth in the sky now very lightly the reason this um has come about is because i have done textured paintings before um for a friend i'm just going to adjust my seat <laughs> I got one of these seats that there's a proper artist tool you can you can spin spin the seat about and you can you can get it at different heights and um it's a it's an old it's a believe it or not I'll tell you a little story about it it's an old stool that I had from my art class when I was in school because when they shut down the the, the older school and modernized it to a comprehensive because it was um a grammar school when I went there I was lucky enough to acquire one of the stools from the art art class so this could possibly be one of the stools I sat on when I was a child what was that it's quite a quite a nice stool in fact proper old school British um, art stool in fact anyway you can buy them but they're not cheap so we got a bit of warmth in that sky we got a bit of we got a bit of sky going on. I'm going to pick up a bit more of this blend in white. I'm going to pick, go into a bit more of this cerulean blue. Um, as I said, you can you can build you can build on this if you want to. So if you wanted to put a bit more blue into this sky, then you could do that. The paintings come about because I said just now that um, my friend is blind, and um, which is a good for me because he can't see what I'm painting, <laughs> and he wouldn't mind me talking like that. I can get away. I can sell him some stuff that he he's not a, he's not he doesn't know how good it is. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a he's a nice man actually, and he likes texture. He, he obviously being blind, he wants to. He likes to feel things, and Southern Down is, is one of his favourite places to go. And he's got some memories down there with his family and one thing and another. And he said, can you paint me a, a painting, Clive, that, uh, that I can relate to from down there? So this is a photograph I've taken, but I flipped it because this, this type, this, this look doesn't exist but I've I flipped it a little bit for composition really and um but that's all I needed to do just to get this to, to look right. I'm not worrying about putting clouds in as such. You know, if you wanted to use a bit of this blending white, you can do that. Get a little bit of cerulean blue, get a little bit of this burned umber to it. And then you could put in 
you may be able to put in some clouds like that just they don't have to be those fluffy clouds just a little bit of let me get a smaller brush there we go I got a bit of a smaller sword flat now let's just get a little bit of this let's just put a, a dirty old rain cloud on a nice warm summer's day we've got a bit of a dirty old rain cloud there we're gonna get a little blending brush um there you go you'd use a makeup brush you can use a lady's makeup brush for this but i do sell these on the on the site now i'm gonna pick up a pick up a bit of white chuck a little cloud in there like that pick up a little bit of maybe we've just had a shower because we get we get rain showers a lot in Wales and there we go I don't want to spend too much time if you want to put a cloud filled sky in my um, advice to you is to take some photographs of some clouds and don't do them freehand when you're starting off um, just follow a photograph if you can and then we'll just fluff that up a little bit like that so we've got a bit of a nice cloud shape there okay so um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get some green i got a little bit of hooker's green here you can any green will do i'm going to blue that down with cerulean blue because i want it i want a nice um blue green now to create a little bit of distance here we need to let's add a little bit of titanium white to that i just want to lighten it down a bit more blue i want to get a little bit of let's get a little bit more blue to that get some kitchen paper a bit of green there like that in fact I'm gonna put a bit of yellow on my palette as I want Oop. I want a bit of yellow on my palette so I'm just adding a little bit of yellow medium. There we go. I'm using the same blue. I'm just gonna paint in a little bit of grass. Because this is um this area is is all grass um and there's there's a there's a place down here called witch's point and um there's an old um this is where they used to get the lamps like this and and get the um the sailboats to come onto the rocks so they could plunder them so i'm just using a couple of different types of green just to represent some grass there and it's called witch's point because um the old saying the old the old thing is that um the woman had lost her husband at sea and she was distraught because she was so in love with him and she threw herself off the cliff off the point and every so often there's a big freak wave that comes up now and it just comes up like this and and there's there's so many people have lost their lives down here um 
fishermen and stuff and my son goes fishing down there and I said to him to be careful in case this witch decides to <laughs> grab him and pull him off into the sea. It's a, it's a, I don't know the exact story but it's it's quite it's quite nice actually. Um I, I, I think it's it, I I think it was just it's a dangerous spot there and um I think it's more of a love story than anything. I think she was just she just committed suicide and just decided to jump off that cliff. So you can see I'm just painting loosely over this. And letting the texture come through. Don't need to do a lot of painting. And this is why I encourage you to try this something like this because you don't really need to worry about painting texture because the texture's already been done for you. All you've got to worry about is just putting paint on there and uh, trying to build up tones and tone in uh, tonal values in painting are, are more important than anything really. So you're just, just applying colours just okay. applying some colours of paint, really, if you think about it. Because you don't have to build, worry about texture and stuff, because it's there for you. This is a lovely way to paint, in fact. You want a little bit darker across that edge there, look. I put a little bit of dark there. That's going to separate that from there. See? Just keep adding a little bit of colour in. There's no trees and stuff around here, but because it's on the coast, but it's a lovely, rich green area, and there's a lot of sheep that um, are allowed to walk over this area because it's like common land. Belongs to the, belongs to the. The commoners and not the queen. There you go. That's why it's called common land. They got a right to let their animals graze on the land. And we can add a little bit more light to that in a second. And just enjoy the painting process. That's what I suggest. See, it's looking, it's looking like cliffs now. We can put some darker green now on this one. And then we can pick up some highlights and things um, at a later stage. So we need to move on now to the um the rocks now the rocks are quite reddish looking so i'm going to go in a little bit with raw sienna first and i'm just gonna put in the, the first color you can play for hours with this And it's such an easy thing to do, actually. And just playing with tone. This really does get you used to thinking about colour rather than texture. It really does. Because all you've got to do, really, is, as I've said when we were doing the grass, you just paint the colour on. The texture's there. You can see the texture come through. So you're thinking more of colour than you are of texture. And it, 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 it makes you loose as well. It makes you loose as well. There you go. It's a lovely red 
rocky type of look from um, Southern Down. Mandarin Majors down that way. That's, as I said, that's another area which has got this type of stuff. And there's a few people who lost their lives because the tide goes out and all this area down there is like basically rocks. And um, the cliff is eroded a lot um, with the winter with the winter um, tides and stuff. And somebody was sitting there um, last year and the the rock the, the the cliff just decided to collapse and unfortunately the, they lost their lives but it's a quite a dangerous place to go really and people still go there and they sit there and under these big rocks and I don't know I don't think I could I don't think I could do that so very likely finding these shapes and texture just checking my cameras to make sure they're all recording and I'm looking at my monitor I got a monitor there which is linked to the side cameras or one of them anyway and um, you'll see me looking over every so often because I want to see what you are seeing because I can't see what you were seeing. I can only see what I can see. <laughs> if that makes sense. So I like to see what I'm actually painting. Because I, I'm sitting on a, on a really strange angle when I paint these things. And you know, I, I've, got a, I've already got a rock face coming out there now. You can see I picked up a rock face. That wasn't planned. That's just texture look. So I can get a little bit more red down in there. You can play around with colour. It's looking a little bit flat at the moment, but when we put the texture in, it'll start to come together. Because if if you add a little bit of black here and there, you can you will see that it'll it will pick out. But the the good thing with this, we've got to, we've got to wait for it to dry a little bit. I'm going to chuck a hair dryer on it in a sec. But um, for the moment, I'm just going to carry on just blocking out my colours, tightening this up a bit. And then when it's dry, you can come along and you, my friend can touch it and you'd be really, really happy with this one. I hope he is, because he'll buy more of me. <laughs> You've got a few of my paintings hanging in this home. There's another sticky out rock there, look. I'm hoping to get to the beach this year and take some more painting photographs. I might take the old easel out and it's not so easy for me to take the cameras and stuff with me because it doesn't make so much of a of a good experience but I might take my camera out and start um, taking some nice photographs of the area that I, can, that I live. Because I live in a wonderful place in South Wales and I'm blessed to have forestries and castles and Roman towns and all this wonderful stuff around me and places like beaches and actually fantastic to area to live I've got to be careful I don't over paint because you lose that texture of these rocks then nice to paint just for painting I was watching something the other day and they were talking about the subconscious mind and, and when we go to bed at the night we um, 
we lie there and we worry about the things that have happened in the day. We worry about what we're going to be doing tomorrow. We worry about that bill that we've got to pay. We worry about picking up the kids from school. We, I was going to do that because, um, you know, it's school holidays and all this type of stuff. And we go to bed and we, 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 we fall asleep worrying. And that's not good. It's not good to go to bed worrying because subconsciously then you were you were, you you were dwelling on that all night so if you sleep for eight hours a day eight hours a night all that's going to be going through your head is troubles and strifes and things and you know that's not good for you because you wake up tired and you shouldn't be waking up tired have you ever gone to bed and woke up and thought oh i'm so tired why am i tired but it could be one of those things it could be that you've gone to bed and you've fallen asleep and you've got this worry on your brain. So what I suggest you do, when you go to bed, do what I do. And I think about painting. I think about sitting in the studio and I think about my next painting and and I don't stress over the painting. Don't 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 go don't go to bed worrying about how you're gonna paint it. Just just paint it in your brain. Just sit there and imagine yourself painting. Um you're thinking, Oh that's yeah, I can do that and and I and, and I when I do um paintings, especially when I do paintings for my for myself, I tend to paint them in my in my mind before I actually hit them hit hit the canvas. And I find that helps so much um on so many different levels that when I actually come to paint the painting it's easier. If you don't believe me, try it you don't believe me try it molly's chasing a cat up there today she's enjoying herself i think there we go how's that look it's looking pretty good isn't it i think so so what i gotta do now is i'm gonna get some blue in the water that's my next job is to get some blue in the water so i'm gonna mix some cerulean blue i picked up a long handled short flat uh, because I want to try and sit away from the canvas. And I'm just going to go in. Maybe a bit lighter. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to paint. Now the, the sea isn't this colour with me. In fact, it's quite a, it's quite a dirty colour. But this is my painting. It doesn't matter, does it? I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt ember because I want to try and get that essence of this um, colour water there. Not a pretty colour, but this is what it's like. So I'm going to try and keep it as accurate as I can and as it comes forward let's get a bit of ultramarine blue to it just builds up a little, couple of little blocks of colour maybe, maybe just a small bit of green in the water these little hard things there they could be little breakers so we can we can chuck some uh, white on them later on I just want to get a little bit of green in that water because it, it does tend on occasion to, to look a little bit like that um, I don't want to go too overboard We can have some water splashing and things like that, just to make it interesting. The way I position the waves is is they come in is coming in this way, um, where is what the truth of it is they go in they go in in that way. But if I did that, I'd be painting the back of the waves rather than the front of the waves. So a little bit of um, artistic license 
can help you create maybe some waves and splashes here and there and it just helps you to create as well so don't worry about being accurate you, you've got a you've got you're an artist at the end of the day you, you don't have to copy things um, exactly as long as you've got an essence of um, what you're trying to, to portray on, on on canvas that's all that counts really there's no rules to art so don't worry about making mistakes and stuff there's no real rules to art there's a nice bit of green there now that could be there's a lot of seaweed under the water there and and maybe it's a little bit shallower there because it's all like it's like landscape underneath that water isn't flat it's not sand there's little dips and troughs and stuff so there's there could be a deep area there that's got a lot of um a lot of seaweed in it and that that that's coming through you can see water's transparent so you can see that coming through so let's mix more of this color together nice darker area here like this let's get a little bit of that brown in there let's just just dirty it off a touch because there's ships and things going through this water and there's oil and slurry and all this other stuff that they say that doesn't come off these things but of course it does you I've seen I've seen oil lumps of oil and stuff on the beach and it's disgusting in in fact not so much these days but when I was a child there was a lot of a lot of stuff washed up on the on the beaches and that's just the world we live in unfortunately I think so I'm just going to get this blocked in Got a nice little green area there let's put a little bit more blue Let's get some shadowing in there. There we go. Get some shadowing in there. Just have fun painting away that stress of everyday life. I upload every Monday. Half past seven, Greenwich Mean Time. So you've missed any lessons then just type in hashtag cli 5 art in the search bar and all my lessons will pop up don't forget I got playlists as well all my lessons are in playlists so don't miss out because there's a lot of lessons there some of them you might never have seen some of them are old and not in very good quality and but it shows me uh, that I, I've, I've, imp I've improved over the years with different things, especially with making videos and lessons. You'll see that I've improved over the years. And it's all thanks to you, all thanks to you viewers for watching, which is why I've, I've changed. Just mix this paint in like that. So we've not done anything too difficult. The most difficult part about this painting is actually putting in the modeling paste and creating something that looks like mountains or whatever you decide to use this modeling paste for. It doesn't have to be a seascape. You can do a mountainscape or whatever. And then all we need to do then is just block out color. It's one of the simplest ways to get into painting. Trust me. Um, it's one of the simplest ways to get into painting I encourage anybody to try this method so what I'm going to do now I'm going to finish blocking out this sea area I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea then and allow this to dry but I'll be I won't be any change in the video so don't worry I'm not going to disappear and not come back <laughs> Because of um, the modeling paste, um, if you're gonna if you're gonna paint at layers on top of layers, you've got to allow that to dry. And if because you've wet that now, 
um, if, you, if you use a hairdryer on it, there's a possibility that it could crack. And this is what I don't want to happen. That's why I'm going to just have a little break. And then I'm going to be returning then to the studio. And I'm going to make myself a nice cup of tea. And, um, and then we can have a look at this as it's dried. And see what else we can do with it. So I'll be back like that. And I'm back. <laughs> as quick as that. So I had some cheese on toast. And I had a nice cup of tea. So that's nice and dry now, I think. So what we're going to do is... Um, Let's get let's get our short flat and um, let's work on this. You can see it's actually changed colour a little bit. You can see the dark has got dark and the lights have got lighter. That's what happens when when acrylic paint starts to dry. Um, it it changes. So sometimes it's better to walk away and have fresh eyes when you come back. So you know don't don't try and do a painting all in one sitting if you if you can help it. That's what I would suggest you do. Is just. Have a little break here and there and then you so i'm just gonna lightly dry brush now this is called dry brushing there's very little paint on the brush and i'm looking for shapes that i can just pick out in shadow and that's all i'm doing is just dry brushing a little bit of paint over you can get some light color and do the same thing and you can go to town now don't worry if there's little bits of canvas and stuff showing through because that all adds to the effect and you can put as much detail into this as you want I could put a little cave down there look there you go let's make a little some brown some this is burnt umber and white just add a bit of white to the burnt umber brighten that up a bit more just bring in a little bit of contrast here and there and you can get in a bit of black let's get some let's get some black don't worry about mixing the paint on your brush it's not going to go that muddy You're just looking for shadows some pure black you can leave it at that if you want you know you, you can you could take this to however much detail you want but in my experience what I find is Sometimes less is more, especially in something like this, because you've got that texture, that stuff coming through now. So, you know, I'm quite happy to actually let's just add a little bit more. Color here. I'm quite happy to, to leave that at that. I think that looks quite nice, I think. So I'm going to just change my brush over. Um, 
them because I don't want to keep washing brushes. I'm going to get some yellow now. Same thing as we did with the rocks now. I'm going to put in some highlights. Just dragging across like that. Make it look as if parts of this has got some light reflecting on it. Quite a nice summer's day here actually. Let's get a little bit of white to that yellow. A little bit of white. Let's get a smallest amount of blue. And again, let's just put some See how I'm dragging that across the texture to make it look like it's just little bits of grass texture coming through. There you go. Can you see that? That looks nice, doesn't it? I think it does. So I'm just going to get some white paint now. I'm going to mix a little bit of my ultramarine blue to my white paint and I'm just going to go the seas come in in this way and I'm just going to drag some light around like this dry brush as I've said dry brushing I, I'm gonna, I might have to get in front of the canvas just to easy seascape Just get some of that light. Could be just a nice little, not so much big crashing waves, but just wavelets maybe. Just wavelets maybe. There we are, just dry brushing. We can get some splashes. Maybe add a little bit of a crash there. Just foam pattern. Just the wind is picked up and splashing a bit of water up. Don't need a lot of crashing waves to create splashes, just could be the tide starting to come in maybe and you'll get these little, these little crashes. Like that. There you go. Just be very gentle and what you want to do now is just catch the edges of these little bits of modeling paste to be put on just to maybe create those little wavelets that we can see like that there we go Be 
Like a little feature. This is vast. This is vast. We can put a little dot there like this. Maybe I have any red. <laughs> this have to be green then. You'll have to have a green suit on. There we go. Some deficient over there. We could have a few seagulls flying in the sky. Get some dots. Or white that's going to represent some seagulls sitting on the rocks very very small you can just about see them but that's exactly what it's like in life you can play around with that water as much as you like and I upload every Monday um, half a seven rainish mean time if you like what you've seen today give it a try use a bit of modeling paste use some different techniques concentrating only on color and tone to give you that depth and you've got a lovely textured painting which you would be proud of making you don't have to put the fisherman in there i put the fisherman in there just to give it some scale otherwise these could be any size so if you if you see a little fisherman down there that's actually giving it scale and you've got some lovely texture in the water and really speaking all you need to do is to create a wonderful textured painting um, with modeling paste or um, tie adhesive. Give it a try. I upload every Monday at half past seven. Thank you very much for painting away the stress of everyday life. This is Southern Down in South Wales. So until the next lesson, I will see you then. Bye. <laughs>